I just want to say one word to you. Just one word. Yes, sir. Are you listening? Yes, I am. Plastics. Exactly. How do you mean? There's a great future in plastics. Think about it. Will you think about it? Yes, I will. It had been a golden afternoon, and I remember having the familiar conviction that life was beginning over again with the summer and summer. You take a photo and you stage the photo and then you tell people that it's not staged yeah and that it's authentic representation of reality you know it's <laughs> it's bullshit it's a lot yeah it's a lie and it's okay if you stage a photo mm-hmm. and it's okay if you don't stage a photo but you can't put a stage photo and try to pass it off as not because then it's you're mm-hmm. you're inauthentic from the from the start so Anyways, so we got a lot <laughs> to talk about. I I like the plastic and the losing ourselves sure. topic. Yeah, we can d- dive into that one. I'm down to dive into that yeah. one if you are. I don't know what my what my questions are. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, maybe to preface, I'll I'll set up like a general outline and then I'll just hand it off. Yeah. Um, and see what, see what you think. But you talked about, you know, not falling into this trap of doing things because it's necessarily seen as a best practice. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe an even better way is like industrial, like almost, I guess the, the first thing should be, we define what makes a thing plastic versus not plastic. And then we can use that work working definition, yeah, and um, and build from there. Yeah, the conversation that we were having leading up to this, that word plastic came out in reference to Steinbeck's book that I haven't read, but will. And uh, that was just the way that you said it, and and summing up that part of the book or the, the, that notion in the book really um it, so i don't forget <laughs> yeah thank you and you're rolling on audio right yep um yep so this book uh travels with charlie in search of america and it's so funny how we just pull in all this stuff into what we're talking about and what we're struggling with you know i've referenced some of these youtube videos uh that you know, are what I call extreme concept, you know, like let's, you know, what happens if you uh, live stream for 12, you know, you're going to live stream until you reach a certain amount of subs or you, um, you put yourself in some kind of extreme conditions or you don't eat for 30 days or, you know, all this stuff. Right. Uh, and then also talking about like the thread boys on Twitter and everybody saying like, I grew this channel or I grew this thing or I did this thing here, you know, read my thread to find out how I did it. How I did or, yeah. Follow and, these six easy steps. Yeah. To... And we saw that with like, you know, the real estate gurus back in the day that would like, like do an infomercial and say, you know, follow my simple system and you too can be a millionaire and have, and, yeah. and, and not have to do any work. Um, this, you know, so that word plastic, um, I keep, I've been using up until this point, the word playbook, like following the playbook. So I was talking about, you got to do a final cut course. You got to do uh, an e-newsletter. You got to do this. Like there's this playbook. And I, and I just, I, I feel myself with a lot of pushback on that, not to the extent I think, uh, especially early on as you have, and I and don't let me mischaracterize you, but I definitely yeah. feel like you're you're pushing back against something, the temptation to plasticify your YouTube channel or your art, your creativity, what your work, the work that you're making. Yeah. And that's self importance. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, we're bombarded with advertising and marketing and YouTube and success and videos where people have this and they have that and all this stuff. 
we have our own pursuits, our own dreams, using money as a tool to, I, you know, said in the previous podcast about it, just would like to hire a housekeeper to, uh, who comes once a month or yeah. whatever to help clean things up, you know? And so, you know, you start thinking about those things and you can give into the temptation to turn the thing that you're making your work into a piece of plastic. Yeah. And that's essentially like, you know, plastic to me is you have simplified the form of something down into, uh, uh, something that you can stamp, you know, form in a mold in a factory and it performs it's a McDonald's this function production yeah. line. It's a yeah, yeah, Ford production the John, line. Yeah, the assembly line yeah. of things and, 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 and the sacrifice you have of quality. And certainly on the flip side, you know, you have where things are so painstakingly crafted, the person can only make one a year. Yeah. And so sort of the world is deprived of this amazing thing because so much time and care and attention goes into making it. Um, is there some middle ground that for the person who has this talent, skill, artistry, craftsmanship, um, artisanship to make something um, without mass producing it and turning it into this piece of plastic because they want the money, they want to sell volume, they want to whatever. Yeah, you know, scale. Yeah, scale it yeah. up. You got to scale it. You got to do the. You got to scale. You gotta, yeah. yeah, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, the, all this entrepreneur culture, all this stuff, and I can feel myself succumbing to that in certain areas yeah. whether it's sponsored content um trying to think about how to increase revenue for my channel because i think that the money that i yeah. make is going to help rescue me from I financial mean, issues all this stuff and how much are you willing to give up of your artistic creative integrity to plasticify something or turn it into flaming hot cheetos yeah. you know so that uh, and it's lucrative yeah, it's yeah. it's attractive mm-hmm um, you know, an example here, Topo Chico, right? This is, this is about as simple as it gets. Great, right? <laughs> great, great one. Yeah. Well, when I found out that Coke bought them yeah, yeah. Or, or owned them, well, like and- I went from this boutique uh, beverage that comes from Mexico and, yeah. you know, all that stuff to, oh, it's just another part of a giant plastic. Well, Topo Chico is interesting. I've, I have two examples from, from recent life and not sponsored by Topo Chico, by the way. We wish. We, <laughs> Topo Chico, if you're out there. No. <laughs> but yeah, you start to expand and, oh, well, we need to do this. We need to do this. We need to, you know, we're going to license this brand out to here and here. You get away from the core yep. or the humanity. Um, another interesting thing, we watched this movie the other night, The Following. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a following that came out in like the 90s with Jeff Bridges. And mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh-huh. Um, it's rough. <laughs> but then, so the same director... Uh, put out a movie um, a couple of years before, and this, you know, it's like a subtitle film. Uh, but the original one, it, you know, it's all um, no American actors, whatever. Right, right. And it was amazing. You know, like Roger Ebert, like four to four stars. And it, it, it's up. all the thumbs up. I mean, it's, it's, but it's really, in my opinion, yeah. um, it's a great movie. It's, yeah. we really enjoyed it. It's, you know, I will definitely revisit it, which says a lot. Like, I don't, you know, I only revisit the films I really enjoy. Sure. Um, but I thought we thought it was great. And then we were curious. Okay. So what happened is an American studio saw the success of the film. They bought it. Same director, Mm -hmm. but we're going to, you know, we're going to get our DP in there. We're going to get our uh, sound designer in there. We're going to Jeff Bridges and we're going to have, um, who's the actress from the the blind side? Um, Sandra Bullock. Yeah. We're going to Sandra Bullock and da, 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 da. And they put this great thing and okay, they made, they make the American version and it's terrible. And they change the ending completely, like abandon the, like the great philosophical conflict or the, you know, the conflict of, uh, you know, (laughs) the, the, the whole conflict of the original story and the, the questions that it asked, they Mm -hmm. Americanify it and they change the ending because it tested better with audiences and they ruin It's going to have more mass appeal. The whole, yeah. And it's awful. It's terrible. Ending's terrible. The film itself is ter- like it's got that ni- early '90s DP lighting feel, you yeah. know that kind of like cringy. All the the whole thing has like that crappy sound design where it's like, you know, like a, um, I, I call it like, it's the. I don't know. Like, it, think of like a De Palma film. Yeah. Like, there's some great De Palma films where I'm just like, if he just would have hired a different person to do the score, this would be like a masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. But like some of those, sco- it, that's personal opinion, of course. Some people might enjoy that, but that early '90s score where it's just like, yeah. oh, yeah, you know exactly what <laughs> right. I'm talking about. And 
added that you know they got their american this is our guy this is our dp they, they, yeah and you know the actors they rolled out the playbook and they repeated all the lines from the original script but uh-huh. it didn't have any of the emotion behind it and they ruined like the the remake is awful mm-hmm. we still have the original thankfully um but you know that's they tried to make turn it down the assembly line that's exactly right and they ruined they took all of the humanity out of it yep and i mean i've run into this problem too with some of you know doing certain um, agency work or things like that where, yeah. you know, you have this thing that worked mm-hmm. when it was done in a, um, a, with an artistic intention behind it or mm-hmm. whatever. And then you try to recreate it for a brand and, you know, get too many cooks in the kitchen and then it doesn't work anymore. Um, so, so something I think is interesting is we both have two channels, right? Yeah. We have our main channels that are quote unquote having success. You just got, uh, success. Yeah. What, but, These are different you know, levels. You, people. You, you reached a milestone that you know may may to some people listening may be like no big deal, but you um, are eligible for monetization yeah. on YouTube with over a thousand subscribers, four thousand public watch hours. I've been monetized for a while now. And Thirty five years. <laughs> revenue and twenty uh, closing on twenty seven thousand subs. I've done sponsorships, yeah. all this stuff. Right. We both have second channels, and both of our second channels. At least, you know, first of all, I'm not telling really anybody yeah. about it. Um, it's ridiculously simple in comparison to the all the production that goes into my main yeah. channel with all the edits and tutorials and live streaming and all this. And this, the same goes for yeah. and your second channel is almost as simple as it something <laughs> can be. Yeah, yeah. Do you think <laughs> that what we're doing? is a response to any feelings or fears that our main channels are being consumed by plastic molecules I, or that they could be, or that we could give in more, or you could give in more to that. And so that we're I like, need, I need to think on this, but the first thing that struck me when you said that was complexity. Yeah. I think a, a human tendency is to make things more complex because mm-hmm. I think you know, we talked about earlier serving your ego. Yep. I think complexity serves our ego. Mm-hmm. If it's complex, well, not just anybody can do it. Right. You know, hey, this, is this is special. special. This is this. You know, I'm applying. Whoa. Sorry. You know, I'm. This is something only I can do. Complexity serves our mm-hmm. identity. Um, and that's not like a you know a grand realization or anything, but I think when you when you simplify things when you're not afraid to simplify things some of the best film or moments of films um some of the best photography i think it's blatantly obvious yeah and it's the greatness of it is the lack of complexity right and there's certainly things that you know have a lot of complexity and um and they pull it off. Mm-hmm. That's certainly, you know, th- this isn't a blanket statement, but I think a lot of the things that we find most appealing as, as a, a species are simple and yet elegant or simple yet. Right. Um, we, we talked about this a little bit in an earlier uh, episode, but that idea of, you know, when, when you build something off of intellect, the furthest you can go is the, the max of your intellect. Right. When you, leave room for you know whatever <laughs> whatever is out there floating around the ether when mm-hmm. you leave room for that and for um for interpretation suddenly that you're not capped by your intellect you're yeah everything's open and i think sometimes simplicity can um it w- works in favor of that um not you know, capping yourself with your intellect. And I think, uh, you know, the plastic, I mean, that's, that's kind of what, what maybe it's the plastic is a byproduct of that Mm -hmm. or that that more plastic feeling. I'm just thinking of the Radiohead song. (laughs) Um, Plastic trees. I think we both love that song. So (laughs) I think that was almost, that was (laughs) almost the podcast. Yeah. Um, no, but I think the, um, like what is things become plastic? It's because we're making them more complicated, right? You've got you you've got non GMO crops, right, or organic crops, 
but then we add pesticides mm -hmm. because, oh, we can increase our yields with the pesticides. Oh, but then the pesticides are causing a reaction and we're killing off more, so we need to add more pesticides. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, we need to change the soil composition. Da, 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 da. And you're creating a new problem and you're solving it, and then you're creating a new problem and you're solving it. And then what happens at the end of that is you have a lot of farmers that are just like, yeah, I'm just going to go non, non GMO yeah. because the seeds are cheaper and uh, the, the yield is, you know, it's pretty, it's fine. And, yeah. you know, with the, and it tastes <laughs> better and it tastes better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, we're just creating, I don't know why that was the example, but we're just creating all these new problems and, you know, we have to solve them and societies go through the same thing, right? Where right. you're creating all of these new problems and they're completely artificial. Yeah. And then as you're solving the new problems, you're getting so far away from the original spark, the original, you know, light, the in intention that, that, you know, you're like, oh, but now you're worried about solving some offset of problems and you're not even focused on the core idea anymore. Yeah. And I think that leads to artificiality or to, you know, yep. things being plastic. I'd be curious, um, just going into specific examples, like, do you feel like you know, you've identified maybe some, uh, some possible, um, you know, some headwinds or some possible problems that could arise if, if you did things one way in your channel and right. you're kind of avoiding them. And I'm sure you've identified things that you've already done that you're like, I don't want to do that again. You know, why is it the hardest, I guess this is my question, why is it the hardest, the hardest thing to do is to stare complexity in the face and be like, this is not even necessary. Why, why have I created, you know, why am I six layers deep on something that was working fine? I think the first, originally. Word, the first word that pops into my head, and especially in the context of me is impatience. Yeah. I think, you know, I agree that we're drawn sometimes to complexity because it feeds our ego and it makes us, it sort of demonstrates us as having made something or do, doing something that's unique or one off or whatever. You know, for me, when I look at, let's get channel memberships, let's get a course going, let's get the, the email newsletter. Like part of it is that you're bombarded in social media. If you're following, like, you know, being a YouTube creator, if you're pursuing photography and you're, hearing other photographers talk about what they did to find success or to earn, you know, build revenue or to get published or whatever. Everybody wants to share their experience with how to do this stuff. Um, because we want, uh, we want to be known. We want to have, you know, our, our sort of standard definition of success. Uh, I find that I, I am drawn to the playbook because I feel impatience sometimes mm. with not, achieving some of my goals, whether it's revenue or vanity metrics and all these things that on a higher level, I don't want to succumb to, yeah. but on a practical level, I feel so much pressure to do so because I need of, to get to that point. And it's not as much like, I mean, there is an emotional element to it, but I just look at like what the score is in my life, whether it's how much money I have or retirement savings, or we have an 18 year old car that needs to be replaced or, you know, all these yeah. things, an older house that, that we had had a plumber out this, this past week and it's a whole thing and I have to fix a floor. I just want to call somebody yeah. and have it all taken care of, but I can't because yeah. I can't afford it. Yeah. And so those forces push me towards plastic sometimes yeah. because I'm impatient about those things obstructing what I really want to do with my life and my time. Yeah. And maybe if I do an e-newsletter and if I get a final cut course and if I do all these things to increase revenue and scale my, uh, yeah. my value uh, proposition, all this stuff, it'll get me to that spot. And I'm, and I feel impatience about it. Yeah. So for me, I'm just much more susceptible to turning something that maybe was that sort of indie underground band that a few people knew about and, into Nirvana. and loved into, you know, the arena, let's do yeah. a tour, let's go on Saturday Night Live, let's be, do a thing on Good Morning America. Um, let's let the producers and the record company tell us what we need to do. Let's yeah. have them do their scientific research and get the focus groups together and like Absolutely. get the next album out so that we can sell 40 million copies and dethrone whatever artist has the most album sales in the U S in a two week span, whatever it yeah, is. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like, oh shit. It's like, <laughs> well, all so that shit. My just, my question then that came up while you were saying that would be. <laughs> right, I'm not gonna do that again. The um, so you you named all of these things like you know the house like uh, the the house needs repairs or it's getting old the car is getting old and yeah it's like how much of these things are also kind of artificial complexities that we've mm-hmm. created for it because I I notice myself doing this where if I've had you know a relatively good couple of weeks and I'm like caught up on things and I feel like I'm in a good place with all of these things and I'll invent Mm -hmm. problems. Sure. Oh, well now I can fix this. Now I can do this. Or like, I've been wanting to, you know, fix this for a while or, you know, we're going (laughs) to, okay, well we'll do that. And you're creating new voids to fill because we're almost more addicted to that process of filling these voids. Yes. And create, you have to create the void, to fill a void. Right. And you, you get almost more addicted to that process than, you know, imagine if the home thing for example like you know there's times where i'm like oh man i wish you know i I just wish we like had a house that we loved and it was just out and we owned it and like had a space and da 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 da. and then i'm like you have a great space absolutely just shut up and appreciate what you have like you you know you, you never know if you're gonna have tomorrow yeah so just sit here and appreciate it like stop creating new problems and then you create a new problem and I, I do it myself. And I'm, I'm wondering what, what are your thoughts on, like, do you think some of those things are artificial kind of creations, you know, like, Oh man, we got to repair the house. We got to get the bathroom fixed. It's like, is it the most aesthetic? So like the other day we, we, um, we took the Lexus on a trip and, um, our dashboard has like, like little micro cracks in it Mm because there was a recall and and it wasn't replaced. So like, I want to replace the interior and like the seats are like the leather's a little worn and stuff. Yeah. And so I'm like, Oh, you know, I just want to get the interior redone. And then I'm driving it the other day and I'm like, this is a car that you've wanted for like, you know, forever. Like you got this and like, this is a car that you fully intend on keeping like as long as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And you're, you have this amazing ability to do all this stuff with it and like it's great and you're finding something wrong with it you're finding a flaw Mm -hmm. that is completely superficial and surface level yep and then you're inflating it to be this larger problem than it is and i caught myself in that and i was like i was frankly i was embarrassed to, to have that but we do it all the time and that that was the first thing that came to mind when when you were going down that list is like do you feel those things are artificial and then if, if they are like, so does that change the relationship to them? Should we try to look past those things and just focus on, you know, the, the work or what's the, well, I think, you know, culturally, I think, uh, the first thing I'm thinking about when you're saying all that stuff is, um, you know, all the minimalism movement, you know, uh, simplification. Um, you know, I'm thinking just now visually in my home, you know, the way it was when we moved in versus how much crap is in there now yeah. that we have two kids, which, you know, creates complexity, creates a lot of complexity. Yeah. And then all the stuff, the tools you need to have kids, all the toys they get because of birthday parties and Christmas. I was just at the container store and I'm walking around going, look at all these tools that <laughs> people spend money on yeah. to store their crap. Yeah. And I was there to buy these little plastic trays to put in my refrigerator to store all of my film because <laughs> I want my film yeah, separated it's have by its, yeah, its own little yeah. category. And I think I, I'm simplifying things, but I'm like, well, no, now I'm thinking about my, I'm adding, exploring this new, uh, component yeah. of the art form of photography is, you know, am I drawn to it partially because of the complexity? You got to yeah. have film, you got to send it off and develop. You makes gotta, me think of those I'm like, collecting cameras. Here's, your, here's your workflow optimization, yeah. da, da, da. And it's like, all you do is these 20 steps yeah. and it'll make your workflow easier than ever. It's right. like, or I could just like write ideas down in a piece of paper yeah. and that's, that's it. That's yeah. the end. I went into my garage this weekend looking for scrap wood. Cause I have all this scrap wood stored. And I was said to myself, I just need to get rid of all this stuff. But then part of you goes, yeah, but I might need it sometime. I'm going to build something here. Yeah, to, help, <laughs> to help make this thing I'm making more complex, more complex. Yeah. But in my mind, I think What if I need simple. to upgrade my desk? Yeah. yeah. So I got some scrap wood out and I fabricated a little shelf, kind of like yours, but yeah. about half as deep. 
and I ran it across the wall in my in my behind my desk in my studio, and so I could put all of the cameras, the cameras I've been yeah. acquiring. Uh, and you know, of course, all of those cameras is getting ridiculous and out of hand. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you need more stuff to manage all that, and I have multiple workstations, one for live streaming, one for this. I, the other day I was like, God, uh, managing all the software for all, like <laughs> updates across all these computers is a pain in the butt. Uh, all the batteries from all the digital cameras. I'm just sitting here going, what are you doing, dude? What's going on? What, yeah. what are you doing? Like your pursuit of all this stuff. Yeah. Like, like does that, does that addition of complexity push you towards plastic? Yeah. Because you have to, and now you can you argue. have to acquire the financial resources to manage all that yeah. complexity that you could argue 90% of it is completely unnecessary. unnecessary. And you can also argue like, well, the shelf is going to add, you know, some character to the mm -hmm. space and now it's more yours and mm -hmm. that's less plastic. You know, that's an argument yeah. that I think is, is a valid one, but at the end of the day, yeah. You know what? I love, you know, I painted my uh, my thing red. Yeah, and yeah. So I, it's this electronic typewriter and um, or word processor, yep. and it was black, and I painted it red, and it took me like an afternoon to do. And I'm sitting here, and I didn't write that day, ironically, right? Yep, yep. And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, oh, this is so great. Now you have this object, this red typewriter. And I'm like, or you could have just taken the five hours that you took to paint this and made something finished like a scene or two or yeah. you could you know you could have banged out half a half a chapter or whatever yeah. you know you, you could have done something you could have made something mm -hmm. so, so and it feels good to make things like that with your hands it it, it yes. really is yeah. and i think there's something to be said for the therapeutic process and things like that but um the van nice that video last week i don't know if you saw it but he got this camera right yeah did you watch I that i didn't watch it yet no so i this is this is fantastic i recommend anybody listening go check it out um but he gets this gopro and he wanted to attach a separate lens to it because he couldn't you know the focus was crap and like the, it was too wide so he gets this adapter for the gopro lens and he builds this setup and you know he spends i think he spent like 3200 dollars on it and you know it, it takes multiple lenses and it you can zoom and it's all manual and it's just this beautiful creation right yeah. And he's like, he's, I feel like I just spent $3,200 to make a more fragile version of my DSLR. Exactly. And then, you know, he does, he, he has this conclusion where he's like, but anything that's crazy should be pursued. Yeah. Um, and I know we're getting a little away from the plastic and I'm sure we'll wrap it back, but it reminded me of the, the black magic, right? I got mm -hmm. that. I'm like, Oh, I got to add this and this and this. Yep. And it's like, you do all this crap and you're like, this camera's 15 years old. Yeah. And I just spent, yeah, I spent like $2,500 on getting it to the point I wanted it to, to be at. And it's right. Like, um, but it has a character to it. Right. <laughs> um, so and no, it's, it's, more it's, unique. it's interesting. And I think if anything, what I'm getting, you know, going through these and these are just firsthand as they, as they come to the head, but maybe complexity isn't necessarily a prerequisite to plastic. Maybe complexity is just something that is present in plastic things and in things that, cause you know, there's a lot of complexity to making a handmade leather bag. Right. Absolutely. Um, so, well, and, and, and I mean like, you know, uh, you know, Coke is do is a, is a complex, uh, ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola. And they have to turn more profit, turn more profit, turn more profit. There's always yeah. pressure to do that. And so they have to acquire companies and invent new products and all this stuff. And does, you know, the complexity of that system of having to, you know, be profitable and make more and, you know, sell more and all yeah. that stuff, you know, fuel them to, 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 you know, continue to pursue plastic scalability, acquiring yeah. companies. Hey, the clear glass is, is five cents more a bottle to produce. We can use this cheaper green tinted glass and save well two million dollars a year. The green is superior. So if that's yeah. the case, Coca Cola, <laughs> just do the green. Or like. so. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I so so the the thought really is just uh, can, it's it's funny because we've gone in a circle because well <laughs> we were also talking about Willem Verbeek earlier and I was remarking on his latest video and how he said that he, we got to stop dating our podcast so I know, much I know. it's a habit we've gotten into yeah. but 
uh, <laughs> I he, just, I'm like the van video and you're I like know. the, uh, <laughs> he went on a trip to buy a car, uh, up in Canada and then they drove it back and he shot one roll of film the whole nine day trip. And, you know, he, you know, found that odd because, you know, before he would look at every opportunity he could to yeah. take as many photos cause it's going to be a video on his channel and help move him forward with subscribers, revenue, right. whatever. And what I thought was interesting was he's gotten to this point where whether his revenue is solid, he's good, his you know maybe he has some financial security, whatever it is, yeah. he's simplifying things by not looking at every single thing he does out there, right. uncomplexifying it, yeah, <laughs> um, simplifying or, it, or driven by incentives, yeah, it's like specific yeah. incentives. I mean, I guess revenue is the incentive. And what sucks yeah. is I sit there and I look at that. And my first thought is, what do I need to do to, to plasticify <laughs> my shit so that I can get to the point get where there. then I can undo it? Yeah. Where the financial, the financial aspect that, you know, whatever it's, it's whether it's real or an illusion. And uh, I think if I get there then I can really do what I want to do. And so that comes full circle to the second channel, yeah. which is my way of doing that and on the still side having an outlet. Yeah. and still having it. Whereas I just want the, I just, you know, want the one thing to just be the, the simple thing that I make that keeps the finances and all those things yeah. taken care of. But I am not succumbing to the plastification of well, the whole thing. And you could even argue that, um, and I mean, you know, if, if Willem's listening, I made a comment after Matt mentioned that I hate when I'm like, if so-and-so is listening, when they're definitely not listening, he but, <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I've been following his, his stuff just since, you know, early film YouTube days. Yeah. Um, and I think he's creating the, the best work he's ever, he's ever made. And I mean, that's only from what I can see that he's shared. Right. Um, but he, he really has identified a voice and you could almost argue that's the beautiful paradox of the whole, the whole question of, you know, what makes something plastic, what doesn't is you could argue that he has assembly lined his channel a little bit, you know, he's got the beats that he's going to hit in mm -hmm. each video. And I'm not saying it's not loaded with like him and his personality, sure. his voice. Yeah. His, it's got his voice, but and maybe that's why the work has gotten so much better is because like he started to put his voice and his, you know, less assembly minded, assembly line minded, you know, ideas into that, into the work. And then he's using this as a support mechanism for that work. And what's fascinating is you haven't watched his latest video and I have. Yeah. So you're essentially pointing out what he talks about in the video, which is, is that he's, he's saying in the video, so much of my work was taking these little road trips and taking photographs to serve yeah, my channel to serve the channel, which I would argue is plastic, right? Yeah. And not necessarily full well, blown, but there's, yeah. like, there's like a, there's the, the, some of the motivation behind it is what we're talking about when we say the word plastic. Whereas now he's starting to be more intentional. He says in the video, how he's thinking of things more in terms of a project. Yeah. And he's, it, it seems to be more connected to the craft, his vision, his artistic thoughts, feelings, yeah. beliefs, w the stuff he's really drawn to. And it's more, it's more about that now. Yeah. And it's not about the frequency of uploads. It's not about eight videos a month. It's not about yeah. to go take photos of mountain landscapes on a quick little road trip for the weekend. Cause I got to turn on another video. Cause I got to get to this subscriber yeah. counter. I got to get to this level of revenue or whatever. So all of that has like chilled out. It's, it's really and the interesting work's improved, and that's yeah, what I want. The work's I, I sit there and I think I go, I want, if I can get to a point where this foundation is there, yeah. then I can really do the stuff that I think is good. It's interesting. Cause yeah, I think, you know, we, you and I both want the same goal and he's somebody who's seemingly achieved that goal. And yeah. it's, um, it, we're, we're approaching it from the opposite direction mm -hmm. in a way. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I look at that and. Um, you know, that was something that I'm not, I don't want to like act like I'm trying to draw a comparison between, yeah. you know, um, my work and, um, his work. But I, I made a couple of those videos where it's like, you know, you're going out and you're shooting or you're, you're, the work is the, 
the thing of the, and the thing like I was trying to demonstrate is like, Oh, this is a process. It's about attrition. It's about, you know, constantly approaching it, having an idea of what you want and going out and, you know, right. working towards that. Um, but it's very hard when the subject of your channel is the, is, is the work. Um, and I think it's almost better to let the work be itself and the channel needs to serve a different purpose. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, the channel, the outlet, whatever the public facing, if there is a public facing. And that's why some, I think so many great artists don't have any public facing because <laughs> it's, it's very, it's, it's a, just a difficult thing to do. Yeah. You're either focused on the work or you're focused on something else. Mm -hmm. And usually if the work is of importance to you, then everything else feels superficial. Right. And, um, it's, it's a hard line to walk. And I think if there's any pushback I have to the whole creator movement of like, Oh, you can support yourself and you know, you, you don't have to rely on any kind of anything and you'll support yourself fully off of your work. YouTube, mm -hmm. it's this great thing. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. And it's, but the work, even if it doesn't appear that this is happening, the work is going to suffer Yes, because it's not the primary focus. There is yep. either the attention split, which is fine. You know, there's a lot of great artists that have hobbies that they're you know really into or like they're, they have other things going on, families, et cetera. But either the attentions when, when the topic of the channel and I'm, I'm rambling, but the topic of the channel is the work that you're creating. Then the work that you're creating is incentivized by the channel in some right, ways. Right. And that's a dirty incentive that might not be easy to recognize, but it's always, it's ever present. Uh, yeah. And it's just the fact that it's a channel. There's uh, a, an element of commerce. I mean, yeah. th there's, there's no doubt that, that the creation of it and not that everybody who creates a YouTube channel is, is sort of, um, motivated by the commerce side Absolutely, of it yeah. that like my goal is to get this monetized i you know like i'm going to do the playbook monetize get a yeah. subscriber base e-newsletter you know have an online store all this stuff you know yeah. like go through the process of of building out my my business in a sense how many e-newsletters do we need <laughs> I, you know i that's a that's a joke but at the same so, time yeah and i've had <laughs> friends that are doing youtube and they have a newsletter and they talk about um you know, how much it has helped them with revenue and connecting with their audience and all that. And I just can't do it. I'm not opposed <laughs> to like, it. I'm but sorry, I just but your can't. newsletter is not the best newsletter. I just yeah. Can't. I, so, so my form, and my I've, form of I've it. wanted to do a newsletter too. And if, if I ever, you know, had the, the, the only idea that I've ever felt like is, is actually sustainable is just, you know, here's three things I found interesting this week, whether it's a quote, a video, a song, and just kind of like our, our text threads yep. where it's, Hey dude, check out this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> or, hey, like a uh, great 1974 country music song that I found. So you know what my newsletter is? It's a weekly live stream. Yeah. It doesn't function the same or it doesn't sort of get the same, uh, result yeah. in the sense of, you know, if like you, some people talk about using your newsletter and if you have like digital products or something, you know, you can run a sale or a promotion just for the, your newsletter recipients, whatever. And those convert sales really well. You know, all this revenue talk and oh, all got to build the revenues. Yeah. Plastic, yeah. Plastic, right. You know, the thing I like about newsletters is when the source actually provides me with information, recommendations, yeah. something of value. Now I'll admit almost, I would say probably 95% of the newsletters that I have not unsubscribed from, I almost delete reflexively without oh, doing 100%. reading and or even reading the body of the uh, email. Audrey knows <laughs> I have a quarterly pour, like purge purge week yep yep where and purge week simplification week. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And so my email inbox is you know, it used to be crazy and Audrey's is hectic. Um but my inbox I, I reeled it in a couple of years ago and I've managed to con like maintain it. It's it's pretty well um you know, I don't have a lot of just shit sitting there. Yeah. But yeah, we have purge purge week and she knows about it at this point. It's at Christmas and Black Friday, my favorite holidays. Because everybody sends their newsletter yeah. and you're like, oh, I got to unsubscribe from that one. Like, um, and no, I mean, there's, you know, there's a couple of things that reach my inbox. Yes. And most of it, you know, once that purge week hits, it's see you later, pal. <laughs> Get it out of here. So, so, so I make the live stream because when I think about it, I'm like, it's a final cut pro tip of the yeah. day. 
it's the rec- the videos that I've watched on yeah. YouTube that you know often are some related to Final Cut, some that it's are a lot just, less intrusive. Yeah, and it's these are the recommendations I have, and then a core topic like yeah. today was you know did the Final Cut Pro ten point six point eight update fix all the problems with the ten six seven update that caused so many issues for two weeks straight? Yeah, and I brought a guest on. Well, so uh, so I I love that because you you almost have you know, I mean, it's a lot like this show, right? Yeah. You're just sitting down and here's what's on my mind. And the, here's the beauty of it, right? The live stream and this podcast versus a newsletter or some other, I don't know, t- uh, digitally tangible thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like a, <laughs> a newsletter takes a, a, product. Sh- a <laughs> shitload more time to put together. Yeah than yeah. me doing a live stream. Now I sit down in the morning. And some people are listening and they're like, yeah, we can tell it takes a lot more time than it takes yeah. you guys to yeah. concept this podcast. <laughs> but for my live stream, I make a thumbnail. I, I, now that I know the format, I know, I, I know what my tip is. I know, um, now I put a lot of work into the whole live streams, you know, so like there's a bunch of work, but oh, once yeah. you do all that upfront work, well, and, and maybe you could argue that with a newsletter as well, but yeah. I don't know. The, the live stream to me is my newsletter and then a podcast, the same thing. Well, even with this, like we put in weeks, yeah. months, I mean, you know, yeah. if you go from initial concept to when we actually started right. executing. And then of course, post-production on it. And then post-production. Because there's, there's a video there's, element. Yeah. And I mean, recording, right? We've, oh, yeah. <laughs> We slimmed those down, but yeah, I mean, we put in Artificial a lot of intelligence, a lot of, um, AI, shut up. <laughs> um, we've oh, put in a lot of, you know, yeah, we've laid a lot of groundwork. Yeah. And all of that was in, yeah, you can make it with, but yeah. I, I think there's something to that. Um, and I think too, when I, if I sit down and think about, I got to put together this week's newsletter together, or if I were to do them in bulk, like I'm going to just do like six, eight of them, whatever. Yeah. I, I'm like the emotional labor yeah. involved is so, uh, Absolutely. but to do a live stream, I'm pumped to do it. I yeah. love live streaming yeah. and I love doing this. Yeah. Now well, I'm, I'm at least so far in the, uh, it's cake for me to do this because I show up <laughs> at your house for two to three hours before and you very graciously have been handling the post on it. It's not, um, it's the post is not, does not yeah, take a long time. Which I mean, is great. And yeah, we, you know, we split everything kind of down the middle and yeah, the post yeah. is, it's not bad. Um, I think there's something to that, you know, it's at the end of the day, it shouldn't, f- I think the, the thing of this podcast, just like we were talking about, we didn't want it to feel plastic. Right. You know, we didn't want it to feel like, okay, now welcome to hey, segment everyone, three. Welcome. It's like, Matt and Alex and the ex- intro, you know. Well, and uh, yeah. here's exactly like, oh, yeah. we only got five Today's minutes to agenda. talk about this. Right. Yeah, oh, hey, exactly. we got to wrap that up because we got to move to the next segment. Yeah, and you know, we're, we're trying to, we, we keep it on pace. And we're, we're getting better at our timing and things like that. Right. There is, um, there's elements to it that follow a, a format, but I mean, the first thing we said, like, we didn't get to record an episode last week because um, Matt had some, you know, there was a little bug that struck his household. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And um, so we didn't get to record. And the first thing we said today is like, yeah, man, it's good to see. And we, yeah. I mean, we talked for three hours before we even got in the room to record. Not three hours, but I mean, we, we sat on the porch right. and talked for, you know, an we hour speak and a half, in double time, so, so yeah. it's, <laughs> we can cover. Three if you hours think that this is off the wall, just <laughs> like, exactly. Um, no, there, there was. You know, we were just happy and excited yes. to do it, and it just at this point it, it feels like a just a necessary part of of the the routine, Absolutely. and I think that's. That it's got to feel like right, and, that, and that's where the there's there's value in it. There's fulfillment from yeah. it. There's connection. I mean, all these things. And I think about some of these these ingredients from the playbook, like again, an e newsletter. And I'm not trying to, tr- you know, this is very subjective. It is. I just don't have. A, I'm not drawn to a newsletter. Yeah. I'm not. I don't. I don't find a lot of value in the ones that I receive. Yeah. Um, I know that the people that send them put a lot of work in, you know, there's thought, I can see that they're well-made. Um, but it's just, I'm not drawn to it. And, and that's okay. Yeah. Like this is the problem with the plastic that's out there on yep. Twitter and all this, the thread boys and the do this and these six steps and all this shit. It just puts all this pressure, constant, you, you create the pressure in a sense, but it just puts this 
thing on you. Um, yeah. For those listening, I'm gesturing with my hand to like, <laughs> like showing like something just bombarding me with, with, it's with, a weight that you have to carry yeah, at all it's like, times. Like I just yeah. sitting here going like, I don't have a, I don't have a course. I don't have yeah. an e-newsletter. Like I'm not doing it right. Yeah. And if I'm frustrated with not being there yet, yeah, it's because I'm not doing the playbook. And I just, I hate that all that stuff takes you away from the center yeah. of it all, which to me is going out and, and making work yeah. well, and there's... then sharing it. And, and that stuff happens. Maybe it doesn't happen as quickly yeah. as if you did it the playbook way. But the connection to your audience might be more authentic. The people that are actually consuming what you yeah. make are more, like a, a truer connection to what you're trying to do. Oh, hundred percent. And those and the thing the thing is, first of all, long term, that's much more sustainable. Yeah, because you're creating real relationships. You're not creating some artifice. And but I need to build more shelves. Se- now. Well, second of all, there's when you were saying <laughs> that something came to my mind. The that Steve Jobs. Um, Steve Jobs quote where he talks about everything in the world was invented by people not that much smarter than right. you. Yes, it's yes, like, yes. he's like, when you, when you poke in, something comes out and yep. like that embodies, you know, all of these playbooks. Yeah. We're just, they're just structures that were created by other people. Yeah. And yes, yeah, some of them are because of best practices or, but nothing in the universe says that that is the only way to do anything. Yeah. And, a lot of times when you try to follow somebody else's playbook, it does come off as artificial. You know, we, we talked a little bit about politicians and that's one of the biggest problems with a lot of politicians these days is it's just, well, here's the beats. Got to hit the beats. Yeah. Got to have this, got to have this. Oh, you didn't get this or you didn't do this. And nobody's just willing to you know have a conversation or whatever. And it, it you know, so then what happens? People disconnect yep. and you, you see that with music all the time, right? You know, you got to have the beat. You got to have, do you have a sad song on your album? Put the sad song and he's track That's number, right. yep. track number six, upbeat song at number four That's right. transition, you know, and then it's yep. going to go. And uh, we need to fight back. We don't need to do anything, but I think it's worthy. It's a worthy cause to fight back against that and to push back against, you know, recipes predetermined because oh. there's infinite ways to yes. do anything. And the only way you're going to figure out a different way is to do things a different way. Well, in, 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 in bucking that, you know, like, like when you were saying that, I'm thinking, you know, of course I've really gone all in on like photography, YouTube and watching lots yeah. of videos and I'm not necessarily, and I'm already seeing myself seeing stuff in my feed that are like how to get assignment work for yeah. publications um, how to sequence your images yep. in a gallery, you know, like yep. speaking of recipes and I just, and you start, it, it inspires you in a sense and that not, not necessarily in a good way, but I sit there and I go, okay, well, how do I get a website where I can showcase some of the work that I've done? Yeah. Because I wouldn't hate if, um, the world Herald or, uh, you know, a magazine contacted me because they like, they need a photographer in Omaha to cover yeah. this thing. And they saw my YouTube channel and my work on and the they website want you to go and-, and they want me to go do it, you know, um, so how do I figure out what the get assignment work playbook is? You know so what that we should I, do, you know, <laughs> and this, this is just an idea that came to me. We should do a show. So there's a gallery in Omaha that you can rent out. Yeah. We should do a show and just, you get one side of the gallery. Yeah. I'll get. So funny enough, the be, meeting that we're trying to have with yeah. uh, Chris and Dan, uh, Dan from Lumen. Yeah. He, in, on his website, and I don't know if it's there yet, but his concept for his brewery is, part brewery part gallery artist space yeah because cool. he's a yeah. he's a photography background yeah and i, I the first I know, thing i thought yeah. about when i read that on the website was me and alex putting our photos there yeah i mean i would like i think in and i maybe it's just the inspired by the rhetoric of this episode but i we we just there are no you yeah. don't have to have a name and here's the program yeah let's just pick some photos that we enjoy and right display them Yep. And hold a showing and mm-hmm. have people together that we care about. And, you know, there's food or drinks or yeah. whatever. And maybe just have a conversation right. about like the process of creating the work where mm-hmm. the it's not, I don't know, you know this is super novel idea. <laughs> but no, you know, that's, that's the first thought that comes to mind. It's, I think, 
I, one of my favorite things, and I tell Audrey this all the time, I'm like, Hey, vote with your dollar. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's, you, you play within the rule book that's made. And whenever we have the chance, I'm like, vote with your dollar. And if you don't, if you don't support something, don't support it. And if you do do, uh, and I know you and I feel that way about supporting like local businesses and Absolutely. stuff, so vote with your dollars, a hundred percent do vote within sometimes voting with your dollars is not the most convenient thing, but the same goes for YouTube. Like when I'm putting up a video and I'm like, I got a perfect caption for this <laughs> and it would, it would probably do well. And then I'm like, you, you gotta, it, you just gotta sometimes be like, I know, but this is not vote with your dollar yep. and you be the change you want to see in the world. This is, you know, it's something as silly as YouTube photography channels or whatever, but I know I think it, you know, it's got to apply to the small stuff to apply to the big stuff mm-hmm. and, you know, just be, demonstrate what you want to get, you know, you should expect from others what you give to others, that kind of thing. Um, and that's, that's just, I think the, the best way to look at it. I do have an idea about a newsletter though, that I want, I wanted to do with the channel. I haven't done it yet. Um, by the way, subscribe to our podcast newsletter. No. That's right. I know. Um, I wanted to do, I wanted to do a, where, you know, once a month, like I collect all of these things. Yeah. And this is like so stupid and, and <laughs> in plastic. I, well, I wanted to type it out on the typewriter. I thought, and I so wanted funny. to mail it to yes. people. And I wanted to do like, oh if, if there were videos that I found were cool, I literally wanted to print it out on that printer, cut uh-huh. out the QR code yeah. and then scan the whole yes. thing. And print out like 40 copies. You get some cool paper. It's so funny. Put them in envelopes. I already have this. I literally bought a stamp for yep. it. And um, I had a very similar thought yesterday where I said to myself. Maybe we should try this on our on our channels and just see how I'm it. I'm emailing with my grandma. Yeah. And I'm like, how cool would it be to get a typewriter and send her? And se- well, instead I, of just emailing her. Yeah. I started, I started reading all of these. There's so many authors that have. Um, Steinbeck has one. Um, where, you know, it's a collection of letters. There's like, uh, Fitzgerald has one, uh, Hunter Thompson has yeah. one. Um, I, there's tons of authors and that, that have yeah. uh, American authors that, that, um, you know, I hold in a, in like, a, like the, like a famous one cause of Seinfeld, maybe like John Cheever's letters. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, and no, but you can, you know, you can read through these letters yeah. and most of it's just correspondences with like their parents or their friends yeah. and things like that. And part of what, that's how I feel about these podcasts. These are like our letters, right? right where you're just waxing about something and then you change topics and it doesn't have a strict format, but I do like the idea if, if there was some way, and I know people are like, just do it with an email. Like that's uh, much right. more, yeah. but no, there's just something, you know, I, I typed my mom a letter last year and I, I typed it out and I sent it to her and then she hand wrote me a letter back right. and I have it I'm like, man, I have this forever. This is my mom's thoughts right now. She hand wrote me like a two page letter. I typed her like a two page letter too. Yep. And we just didn't continue that. And I'm like, this is so cool. So something about there's Yeah. It's hipster. It, totally. But, but we, 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 I think we're just drawn to what's the. What's a different way of doing it that just, yeah. and isn't that funny? Everybody, everybody was, you know, their mailbox was crowded back in like, know. In, you know, nineties, two thousands. And yep. I was circling back like, I think it might be cool to send a paper letter. <laughs> like, yep. But yeah, and the, you know, uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I would love to explore something like that and yeah. just have conversations around finding. And that's, you know, that's asking a lot of trust. You, you're asking people, but you don't have to send like name and address no, or no. just send, send a pseudonym and then your mm-hmm. address right? or you know, whatever. And, um, yeah, you know, mail letters and you know, I think you'd have to protect it. You don't want to obviously incorporate your address onto it and yeah. make that public information, but, but like, I, I don't mean, know. I don't know. It'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's something- a stamp costs 50 cents, right? You're, you're going to pay more for a, an email list. Yeah. You know, you, but you could just ask people to send you addresses and put it in an Excel doc. And is that the most scalable thing? No, no it's no, not. It's, it's the opposite. But you know what? Cap it. You know, we've got, right. uh, we've got a 400 person mailing list at most or whatever. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, I, again, like not, not plasticing it, but like certain, like, I don't know, like you subscribed at a certain time or you, um, I don't know. So there's some qualification or whatever that gets that, that 
that um it doesn't have to be money like they're paying some premium yeah or whatever. i don't like, i don't think it should cost anything no. or i mean if it does it literally you, like, costs the price select, of a, like you do do an e-newsletter yeah. but there's 10 people that get that get the physical by physical mail well i mean and i'm like and it changes first of all every, how much fun is that to you type it out yeah and it's got grammatical mistakes whatever sure. you could go through it and cross it out Light and correct out it with there. pen yeah yeah and then you know you find these qr codes or whatever this music that you like and you can write it in yeah you can cut out the qr codes and put it in there and tape it in and then yeah. you scan the whole thing and yeah it's not the direct you know contact print of your mm-hmm. type out but right it's its own thing that was handcrafted and yeah yep i just think that that's that's a cool concept that um you know I'm, i might like to explore more but We'll no, see. I, yeah, and I think those conversations around, and this goes back to what I've been talking about with some one of the partnerships that I'm trying to work on with my channel is how do we do this differently than yeah. what we're seeing in the playbook and all this stuff? And yeah. I think that's part of why I'm drawn towards that this the illusion of financial freedom yeah. or financial security is like I just want to throw all of that stuff yeah. out the window and just do it how I feel like doing it. And I just I, I have this have I have this about, odd feeling that. <laughs> The ironic I know. part of that or the irony of the whole bit is that when you do start to throw that playbook out is when the, the yeah. biggest success starts to, I know. to work in. And, you know, it takes time to discover the playbook itself and to start pushing back against it. Yeah. And sometimes you need to go all in on it to, yeah. to reject it and get back to get back you know, to the, pen, <laughs> the pendulum. Yeah. Swings. Go all the way into complexity in. to figure out that you had it right yeah. to start. And I think that that is a natural reaction why we see people move towards minimalism. I applaud you for simplifying your cameras. And you, we yeah. talked about this the other day that you're like three, yeah, which yeah. some people could argue. Like, oh, That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, it, you, it, you could have two. The M6 should be two. And the M9, yeah. Right. But yeah. it's also hard to give up a Leica that you've owned and invested in. And well, and that's that. the biggest thing is, I mean, the only reason that I bought the, the, the third camera that shall not be named here yep. um, was to, because the second camera that shall not be named was in the shop. Yep. And, um, I was just like, Oh, I just want to have this experience. This is the way I look at experiences. My life philosophy at this current moment is that experiences can never, whenever people are like, man, I can't, eventually I'm going to remodel my basement and it's going to be great. Or eventually I'm going to do this. If there's nothing that was going to put you in a long-term permanent disadvantage, do it now. Mm -hmm. You know, it just get it out of the way and start a pre enjoying it. Um, which is, you know, that's in paradox, the feelings that I expressed at the beginning of the podcast where I'm like, Oh, well, there's just all this complexity and this waste of time. But I do think, um, you know, me personally, I do get value from aesthetic beauty around yeah. me and you know, the cameras are something that I get a lot of joy from. Right. I get just as much joy from, you know, the selecting a coffee cup in the morning, which yeah. one I'm going to drink out of. But, um, I, I like to index heavily on those things that I do get joy from because, you know, I, we're not promised anything and you just got to take advantage of that. And I think that's part of why I'm, you know, there's two reasons, but I'm, 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 you know, very early on in film photography specifically in this second channel, but I am very much looking at and buying cameras yeah. uh, that are inexpensive. Some that maybe are sort of inexpensive in the larger context yeah. of how much a very expensive camera can cost, but you know, a hundred dollars for, yeah. from a 1983 point and shoot, you know, um, and the collection is getting big. Yeah, it's getting... <laughs> um, part of that is the concept behind my channel is I'm going to rotate through a lot of different yeah. cameras uh, as as part of, of the different photo videos that I make um, because not only do I want to experience you know, what it is to use them, especially the film cameras, because they're not as nuanced as a digital camera and the menu systems and the yeah. this and the that. Um, but eventually I know the pendulum will swing back and, and there'll be a want. point where I'm like, I'm tired of sourcing all these yeah. different cameras. Will my, is that a, such a character in my channel that my audience is going to be upset if I simplify Why and you, use yeah. two, three cameras and that's it. Cause it's about the photograph, not the yeah. tool. Uh, anyway, so yeah. Uh, finding Kevin Walker at Walker repair is awesome and horrible at the same time. <laughs> hey, you're just like, I can buy all of these cameras. So I'll tell you a quick story. I went, I went, I took this, um, the, the Canon sure shot line. There's three from the early eighties that have this like sort of black clunky retro, like cool look to them. I'm really drawn to the, the design of them. 
and I have the third one, the last one, uh, uh, that I bought first, but the batteries had yeah. know, corroded, whatever. I got a second one on Facebook marketplace, the middle one that was made. So I took the, the one I have into Kevin and I'm like, can you fix this? He's like, I'll take a look. Well, he ended up taking a bunch of them that he had taking all the best parts from all building of them it into one to build super camera, one that super works. camera. Yeah. And of course, when I walk in to pick it up, cause he's done doing the repair work, the first one in the series of those early sure shots is sitting on the counter. And I'm like, I'm like, where did this come from? And he's like, a customer just brought it in and I bought it from him. I'm so, like, how much? <laughs> and he's like, 60 bucks. I'm like, sold. You're like, unfortunately, that's right within my yeah, price range. Right within my <laughs> price range. So anyway, just, uh, so I have quite a few cameras. That so are we just going to get amassing. giveaways, like massive giveaways when you hit maybe. that pendulum swing point? Yeah, maybe. So stay tuned. It'll be giveaways or I'll, you know, there, there, some of them it just aren't, you know, 60 bucks, yeah. 40 bucks. Is it even worth it to to sell it. I almost would rather see it in the hands of someone that like was really excited about that yeah. camera or was going to use it. One of my favorite, I gave away film earlier this year to celebrate. Was it like, it might've been like a thousand subscribers or something. Yeah. I gave away film though. And, um, the person messaged me and you know, we had a, like a brief conversation, but that was one of my favorite things. I want to do more mm -hmm. giveaways. I feel like that's what film did you give away? Um, I just gave it like a pack of portrait for, it was like yeah. 120 portrait 400. Yep. Um, which I guess is like gold now, but uh, yeah, you can't, you can't even find Ultra Max at oh, Walgreens. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we did a good job. Uh, we we stayed to yeah. the. We went on and on and on. But so the last thing on plastics that popped in my head earlier was, um, you know, the line from The Graduate where you know he's talking to the older gentleman at the pool party or whatever, and he says one word or I can't remember the line, but he goes plastics. It had been a golden afternoon. And I remember having the familiar conviction that life was beginning over again with the summer and summer. 